Hello everyone, thank you for waiting. Please take your seats, the show is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, Cube 3's Glass to the Wall. Welcome, one and all. This is Glass to the Wall. Yes, I'm your host, Adam Riley. You might know me from such media outlets as K-Pop Corner, The Our Father, and of course, Cube 3, home of Glass to the Wall. <laughs> this is a special edition of Glass to the Wall. We haven't done one for a long time. We've taken the formats off the shelf, dusted it down, especially for the sake of Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. Recently, one of our staffers, Tom Barry, headed over to Anfield to try out the game and learn more about what to expect from the 2018 edition of Konami's popular football series. He also had the chance to sit down and do an interview with one of the product managers. Cube 3's Glass, Glass to the Wall. Wall. Piping, Piping hot, hot gaming goodness. So we're going to jump straight into Tom's thoughts about the game. So Tom, can you just give us a bit of an introduction about yourself for those that don't know you? Hi, I'm Tom Bowie of Cube3. On June the 23rd, I was at Anfield to get a hands-on impression of Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. And I also got the chance to speak with Adam Batty, the global product and brand manager for PES, about how this year's edition has been shaping up. Fantastic. So you're a bit of a football aficionado, I would say. Is your favourite FIFA or PES? Or have your allegiances changed over the years? Me, myself, I used to be a massive fan of Super Soccer on the SNES. I also really enjoyed International Superstar Soccer, also on the SNES. And that moved on to the N64 as well, and then it kind of lost its way and then it disappeared. I've never really been a big fan of FIFA. It just didn't quite sit with me. I know a lot of my friends actually love the FIFA games on the SNES and on the N64. I think FIFA 98 on the N64 was quite a popular choice, but I was always an advocate of ISS and then the original Pro Evolution Soccers on the PlayStation. So yeah, so tell us more about your footballing background in terms of the gaming side of things. Briefly, I am an avid football game fan, but like most people, I've jumped between PES and FIFA a fair amount over the last decade or so. I started out with PES and I was extremely dedicated to it back in the day, and I can't tell you how many hours me and my friends lost to PES 4 and 5, especially since Master League back then was just head and shoulders above anything else. But anyway, I must be honest and say that I have been more of a FIFA guy in recent times, though I have always checked in with PES and always been pretty impressed. I'm especially enthusiastic for Pro Evolution Soccer 2018, and I have already made my decision to jump back on board with PES this year. Right, well, there we go. I'm certainly excited about PES 2018, definitely. I used to always just call it Pro Ev, which I think confused a lot of long-term fans because they all call it PES, I call it Pro Ev. But hey, I don't know where I picked that up from. Maybe I made it up myself. So, you went to Anfield, and you went to play Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. So, can you just kind of tell us a little bit more about the event itself? 
The event was held for probably about 20 or so journalists and people from the media and they had around 12 PS4 Pros and two PCs just set up and ready to go for when we all arrived first thing in the morning. I do have to start by saying one thing that did impress me about the event, which speaks to how confident the team are in PES 2018, was just that they let us loose upon arrival rather than giving us any sort of talk or preparing us on what to look out for. I think that one very particular issue with football games at the moment, and this is more on the side of FIFA to be honest, but it's relevant to both, is that the trailers and the reveals are just so filled and congested with these totally meaningless, kind of fabricated buzzwords to sell the game that year. Just something like touch plus or defensive dribbling or whatever else. There is just far too much showing and telling rather than letting people discover those features for themselves intuitively. So even though I think it's quite a minor point, I did think that starting the day by just letting us loose was actually quite a sort of show of strength and confidence and it was certainly the right decision on the day because we were all continually over the space of three to four hours just discovering neat little things about the core gameplay and that was very, very impressive. Great, that sounds fantastic. I wish I'd been there myself, actually. What would you say kind of stands out in Pro Evolution Soccer 2018? For those that bought last year's edition and the year before and the year before, it's always important to know, is it just a roster update? Or have there actually been some key changes? What made it so exciting and what grabbed your attention? I think the most striking thing about the game and the most immediately apparent thing was definitely just the fluidity of the game in general. It was definitely a slightly slower pace compared to last year, and I did go back and sort of compare just briefly. And I think that this sort of slightly slower pace definitely promotes more thoughtful play and in general sort of made it feel like a much more dynamic and authentic game of football and in that sense very realistic. So it was very impressive there. And something else that sort of connected to that was, you know, the way the sort of balls fell, how loose the play was on occasion. Definitely, like, it just sort of felt very on point again in that respect. When the ball wasn't really under control, it seemed like the flexions and the way the ball would bubble and people would struggle to sort of get the ball and regain control was noticeably improved compared to last year and compared to other football games. So that was something that was just sort of great to see, really, and definitely a big step up, I would say. Now, something that always bothered me was how absolutely scary some of the players looked. (laughs) especially in some of the FIFA editions. They just didn't get the facial mapping correct at all. And then, of course, there was the animations that were a bit jerky. So you'd have players that looked like they were going to head the ball, and then it would kind of go through the head a little bit and then bounce off the chest because the model didn't have the right collision detection, etc., etc. So how about Pro Evolution Soccer 2018? Because, to be honest, the series, I think, has always looked a little bit better than FIFA. But there could have always been improvements then. You know, it doesn't always seem to push the technology that it's being put onto. For instance, some of the early PlayStation 4 versions of PES kind of just look like the PlayStation 3 versions with a slightly higher definition. So has 2018 made any improvements in that regard? the visuals have been drastically improved this year. This is sort of done in two main ways, I would say. Firstly, just the sort of fidelity and the level of detail is incredibly impressive. I'm a Liverpool fan, so seeing the sort of the small, small minor details in the stadium at Anfield, as well as just the sort of detail in the face of these players, it's very, very impressive. It does enhance things. It makes it feel very authentic. But then what also brings the visual side together is just that the animations this year, and this, I suppose, also ties into the gameplay itself, were very, very special. Spot on. Everything looks a bit more real. The way that players sort of take the ball on, the way that transitions happen, all of these things have been worked on, you can tell. And basically that's the sort of theme that I took away from my few hours with the game. There's just a ton of small little adjustments and minor tweaks this year in gameplay terms that uh, really do seem to, in combination, just add up to something quite impressive. And Adam, in his interview, did say that, you know, this year's game feels like a different cut of cloth. I think I know exactly what he meant there, and I think everyone else there did on the day playing it was really quite a treat and it definitely feels like the most authentic football experience out there i think it's going to be very hard to match this and yes the visuals were just crazy good and i think people are going to be very impressed with that side of it and just you know the way that that adds to the immersion in general in all of those ways it's just another massive plus for pez 
Oh, that's really pleasing to hear, actually. So they've spruced up quite a lot. So I know it was great, but it's nice to hear that extra level of polish that's been added to it. But in terms of the event and what you played, did you have full access to everything in the game? And how did it handle? How was the game developing in terms of its control and things like that? Because you do want a little bit of reality kind of brought into the game, but you also kind of still want that arcade feel that Konami always brought, which made it different from FIFA. You don't want every time poor touches happening and things like that, but you do want the reality of being able to kind of chest it down and get that volley in or that scissor kick or whatever. It was just the exhibition mode that we had access to. I believe it was the E3 build. We had five teams there to choose from. It was Brazil, Barcelona, Russia, Dorman, Atletico Madrid, and Liverpool. And I played quite a bit with every team. I played the most with Liverpool, but just because they're my team. And it was really interesting sort of just checking out whether each of these teams' sort of characteristics sort of really showed. And they definitely did. And I think that, again, going back to all of those minor and sort of small gameplay tweaks and how they add up, they definitely sort of seem to help you know those distinct characteristics of these teams sort of show playing with Liverpool I was very impressed with the animations and with the way people like Mane, Lalana, Coutinho moved around it was very authentic and something else that I thought was pretty impressive that sort of ties into this was just what I would say were more contextual touches quite often a very frustrating aspect of football games is just when you have a golden chance but it involves sort of controlling the ball in in quite a precise way and you know for whatever reason it just doesn't come off basically because the player has not controlled the ball in a way that's instinctive or natural and that's more to do with the animation and with the programming side of it but Pez has always been pretty good at that to be fair but this year I have to say there were a lot of moments when the way that the players sort of brought the ball or attempted to bring the ball under their control was very very impressive there was one moment where I was in the penalty box with Liverpool I believe it was Mane a ball sort of bobbled in the air yeah, and a defender didn't quite deal with it and he had a sort of half chance to hit it on the volley but he had to sort of dig it out from underneath him the way that that worked I was just sort of totally convinced when I hit shoot that I was speculating and I was very surprised to see that it was a very sort of authentic attempt at hitting the ball and it nearly went in I think it either just uh, grazed the crossbar or it was saved but both of us the guy I was playing with another journalist uh, we both looked at each other and were quite impressed so there were loads of little moments like that uh, all throughout the day people were noticing these sort of neat little improvements and little changes in terms of the gameplay unfortunately we sort of didn't get to see much more beyond that e3 build something that was new that we did have access to was the 3v3 mode which is something that adam talked about and was quite fond of in the interview and that was a lot of fun too and i think something that he sort of made the point himself actually was that that mode is something that brings several people over to the brand at once and that's something that they kind of want to come up with more often in terms of modes because that's kind of a way to actually bring people i.e. groups to pez because otherwise it's quite a difficult game i think to have an individual trying to convince all of their mates you know oh next year buy this it can be very difficult i think that there's a lot to pez this year that is just going to convince people when they've just had you know five minutes with it but then on top of that you know there are a lot of modes like this that have been added and there's also clearly a lot of content coming up that's not been talked about gamescom it's going to be quite important for pez from what i gathered and it's going to be very interesting for pez this year because i think they've got an opportunity the gameplay has always been there but what's really exciting this year i think is definitely just that they've brought some of those more underwhelming aspects of the game up to scratch and then on top of that i mean one thing that i haven't mentioned at all yet the pez league which was hugely important to pez 2017 Ah, you mentioned the Pez League. Okay, so can you just tell us a little bit more about that? I was at Anfield for the semi-final and that was a crazy day. And it was really a lot of fun being around some of those people who were clearly being taken on quite crazy journeys because of Pez and because of their insane abilities and all of that. Some of those games were just really, really entertaining. And it's clear that that side of Pez last year was maybe something that they didn't quite anticipate how big the reception for it would be but it definitely went from strength to strength and you could tell from speaking to Adam that there's a lot of information that has not been revealed about this year and how the Pez League and esports all of that sort of stuff is going to inform and influence this year's iteration so I'm really looking forward to hearing more about that. Great so there's more to come more to be revealed okay I'm looking forward to that definitely. 
So you had a chat with the product manager of Pez. Can you introduce that before we go into the actual full-on interview? We're going to hear some clips from my chat with Adam Butty, the Hez Global Brand and Product Manager. But I did want to sort of talk about how genuine he was. First of all, he just seems to be, you know, absolutely crazy about Pez, incredibly dedicated and incredibly enthusiastic about it. But it was really, really interesting hearing him talk in very upfront terms about the sort of design and the sort of development structure and hearing him talk about cycles previously, particularly how 15, 16, 17 were connected and what they're going to do differently with 18 and how they move on out from there it was very interesting and I did want to say that I thought overall you know it's great to see a football brand being this conscious about that sort of thing really because I think it's been quite stagnant for a long time now with these brands and moving forward I think it's great seeing things like the 3v3 which I did get a chance to test and that was a lot of fun they are really just great ideas and this is something that Adam mentioned why that mode and coming up with new modes and things like that to add to Pez why they want to be actively thinking about that side of it a lot is just because bringing a group over together to try Pez introduce them to the new iteration it's a lot more straightforward than bringing individuals and trying to get them to sort of bring over their friends separately or in a sort of clan I think there is just such a loyal fan base within Pez already I think anyone who sort of samples it this year is going to be very very taken back by it it's definitely to me the more authentic footballing experience right well thanks for that there tom and i suppose without further ado let's get on with the full interview that tom did with adam from konami at the pro evolution soccer 2018 event enjoy supreme victory Listening to Cube3.com's Glass to the Wall with your host Adam Riley, featuring Machinima Sounds Poltergeist. Visit www.machinimasound.com for more great music. Glass to the Wall special debate is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Here we go! 
All right, Adam, thank you very much for speaking to me. No problem. And Cube3. First of all, can you uh, tell us about your role in Konami Company? Yeah, sure. I'm the global product and brand manager for Pez. So I'm working a lot with the team over in Japan, mm-hmm. working with the game. And in terms of branding, just making sure really on the branding side that what we're doing is uh, global. Yeah. It speaks to all our markets. But there's a strong reliance on me to work with dev team regarding the quality of the game, making yeah. sure that we are making the best players for the fans. Right, excellent. So how's today been going so far then? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, we've done E3, right? And yeah. we had this world tour, which is just starting now. This is their second leg. And certainly I've been working for Konami for like four years now. The hype is much bigger now. But I think it's probably a continuation of something that I've said from the start is Pez is not going to win people over it after one perfect one game. Yeah, yeah. It's going to build and I think mm-hmm. we're seeing the benefit of last year come through and what we're seeing is everyone take Pez 18 really seriously because of the, some of the big changes that we have as well. I've heard you mention sort of cycles and stuff like that. Yeah. Before, yes. Where is Pez 2018 in the cycle? Is it sort of midway point or is it? No, it's the start. It's the start. But right. what's really important is, is yeah. that I felt, and this is not something that we've meant to do, but mm. how we were building the last three games, Pez 15, 16 and 17. Yeah. What's really important is that those three looked like the were linked right. of course they were better of course they were improved but yeah. there was a visual similarity there was an animation they all felt like you're playing the better version of what was before yeah. whereas 18 it's like a different a cut of cloth yeah. it's completely different and one thing that I do want to be said is the three year cycle that we're entering is actually going to be a shock every time so whereas 15, 16, 17 are linked 18 will not be linked to 19 in the same way we're hoping that you guys go wow as it seems to be that they have done with 18 yeah. it's a three year cycle built on big change so that feedback and reception from fans is quite uh, important then for this one. it is because it allows us to to be more confident in how we develop further on. So what you see here is seven key things that we announced back in May and right now we're focusing on things like the, you know, all the gameplay features, like the dribbling, the ball physics, the protection, the brand new visuals, but also 3v3 as well, you know. So we're focusing on those kind of things, but there are huge changes to the series, which again, I'm hoping that hopefully I see you again next year Mm -hmm. same venue and we're talking about just as big changes and surprises as well. Would you say there is one sort of primary focus of attention or would you say I think it's 3v3 and that's like a very very personal thing what you talk about is the gameplay being part of pairs and kind of the DNA as long as we don't mess that up really we have license to do anything and I think because and the reason why it's kind of a good or bad thing but the main reason why people play pairs isn't because of the modes and and everything else around it. Yeah. Master League is a big part of the PES history, yeah, yeah. but the gameplay is the main reason why you play, which mm. actually, like I said, it's a good or a bad thing. It means that we really need to focus on improving these modes so sure. they become yeah. something. Because yeah. right now, we've got a lot of games, I think even our competitor, mm. where people are playing that for a mode. They're not yeah. playing it for the game. And we sure. really need to make sure that we're creating these compelling modes. The 3v3 for me is a personal thing where I think Listen, I've got a brother-in-law who's early 20s and I've seen him and his friends, how they play and this kind of being able to play with your friends, whatever game it is, it doesn't have to be the best, but you want to be playing online with your friends and it's very difficult to bring people over to pairs as well based on the fact that you have a group of people, there's going to be some that play X, Y and Z. This is an easy way to bring everyone over together. So for me personally, it's a big move. And also for our esports team as well. In terms of the pairs League, I mean, that's been going from strength to strength really and I just wondered sort of how particularly did that mould Pro Evolution 2018? So for PES 17, it was phenomenal. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we, we put a million dollars into it in terms of prize money. Mm-hmm. The winner got 200k. More than I'll ever earn. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to see, actually, to be fair. Because it kind of, these people's lives, it's taking them on a totally oh, crazy journey. And it's great to be a part of it. And I think one thing that I will say about esports is, mm. actually, esports is something that I hear a lot about, like people think it's going to be like, you just do it and it's esports. It's something that happens naturally. It's built from your, actually, from your core fan base. Mm. That's why you've got uh, League of Legends, for example, is so huge in the world of esports, bigger than any other game, really, mm. based on the fact that it's not the companies make it happen it's the people that are watching it and playing it that made it into what it is today Absolutely. and I think we're so lucky because you know Pez is not on that level yet but mm. I can clearly see it going there because of how 
hardcore Pets fans are. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. they are really the hard. Is it's unlike crazy. anything else, isn't it? Yeah. I just support to remember that because, yeah. yeah, you do probably see all this sales comparison charts with FIFA sure, and stuff. Yeah. But it's really important to note that this is a business world that we're in. I love what I do, but if Pez wasn't selling enough, mm. I wouldn't be here with you right now. Yeah, yeah. We've been here for over 20 years, and I've heard every year since I've been here, oh, FIFA's selling so much more than you. It's like, yeah, but I'm still here, mate. You know, mm. we're still yeah. selling. Absolutely. And it's because the fans, they're so passionate about what we do because they believe in what we do and that's going to really help us with esports we're going to have some really big announcements at gamescom Excellent. where we reveal everything what we're doing around yeah. esports awesome. uh, around pez league and, that sounds uh, amazing and everything sounds like it. there's a lot to learn there sounds i think we're going to use actually gamescom as the starting off point for everything pez league excellent great Cool. So another question. This is about the PC version of 2018. So last year, it seemed to be a build that was from, was it the 360 and PS3? It was, was a hybrid. hybrid. It was better than PS3 and 360, but it had limiting features compared to PS4 and Xbox right. One. And what's the situation this year? Then? The best, mate. Excellent. It's the best. I can't That's believe it. Idea. Yeah, me too. It's something that we wanted to do for a long time. But, you know, being completely honest with you, it's about managing the resource. It's a similar kind of answer that I had to somebody before who was asking me, why don't you do TV ad? why don't you spend loads of money on marketing yeah. I was like dude I'm trying to survive we're trying to do what we can with Pez and we do within our means that's why we continue to actually make the game so when it comes to the PC it was actually about resource right. so our focus is console because our majority of our fan base is on console so as we were developing and adapting Fox Engine we had to keep learning about the engine and that cost man time all those kind of things yeah. it was never a case of not wanting to do it it's just not physically possible for us to fit it in it's only when we finally got to a stage where we've right we've cracked it now we can easily do it smoothly where we bring Fox and its whole system PS4 system kind of over to PC people think it was easy because they say oh but obviously you make your games on PC blah, blah. but making and developing something taking the next step to releasing something is a completely different thing and when it comes to the PC world where there's so much support needed there's so much complexity regarding mm. you know different graphics cards and yeah. you know CPUs and memory and all this mm. that you have to do so much more testing so, before yeah. you do console because console is a box there you test it it's done so I just want everyone to know that it was the long process I'm not trying to say it's an excuse because a lot of the companies do it, but for us, it was more about doing it in a way which fitted in with our whole resource management and development cycle. Excellent. I mean, this year it looks just absolutely brilliant on PC. I mean, the best, would you yeah. say it's the, you know, the definitive the, the lead. Least, yeah? yeah, it's yeah. definitely the lead. We're running NVIDIA GTX 1080, nice, yeah. so they're really powerful GPUs. Yeah. I mean, this has got like 32 gig of RAM or something, you know, absolutely crazy. More than you need, right? Yeah, yeah. But what you're seeing is if you compare it next to a PS4, which yeah. is running on PS4 Pros yeah. here, That's pro you can, yeah. yeah, you can clearly see it's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about what you have. And I'm really happy to offer that because the PC users have kind of stuck with us, mm. for, you know, through the worst times. And I feel like it's... It should be, I think, especially when you look at when the PS4 first came out and the power it was running on, it really should be the best on PC. Moving on, another different platform, uh, you've probably been asked this already, yeah. but is there any plans for a Switch version? Or yeah, you're anything? right, we have been asked a lot, and yeah. it's actually nice to be asked a lot because we all personally feel like it's doing fantastically well, and the interest is huge. For us, I will say, we have announced all the formats where PES 18 is coming out from, and mm-hmm. Switch is not on that list, but it's interesting that we don't want to rule it out because it's so successful I personally absolutely in love with the Switch as soon as I play Zelda and how I played it I just realised how amazing it actually is I can't wait for Mario I saw that at E3 what a game but I think again what will answer the question is like resource can we fit it in can we perhaps use a certain version if we have to build something bespoke it becomes more difficult so there's a lot of things that we need to answer much like the PC it sounds like you don't want to make the compromises you don't want to see the exactly the experience that you want yeah I think we need to do a lot more research on it we brought out Bomberman Mm -hmm. which was a huge success so we're definitely looking at it awesome so we're here at Anfield today, obviously, yeah. because it's fully licensed. Team, is there any new clubs in news in that respect? No, year? not right now, but in terms of news, yeah, I can say that there's going to be more than last year, Excellent. which is good news. Yeah, yeah. And we're looking to have more partnerships than last year as well. So, you know, we are here at Anfield and we are talking about how we're working with this great club, but we are 
going to be talking about other great clubs that we're working with, hopefully yeah. soon. Hopefully before games come, where we can go into it. I mean, licence is, is always an issue. It's always a concern. I think one thing that I was mentioning to somebody else is we are limited in the licensing space. That's just the way it is. But we need to not use that as an excuse and we need to make sure that we're building upon year on year. So that's the direction that everybody should expect from us now. So the reason why I say it is, past 16, 17, we had less teams. People got annoyed. And I think 17 to 18, we'll have more. And the focus is more, 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 more. Yeah, excellent. I mean, to me, it, uh, I love playing as Merseyside. I mean, that's <laughs> for me, you know, aren't they? But yeah. <laughs> And just to go back to the gameplay and stuff like that, I mean, I've been playing a good few hours, good few matches. I'm a Liverpool fan. And oh, great. So I noticed people like Lallana, you know, the animations for those specific players, yeah. you know, they're just so dead on. Is that something that's for every team? Do you have a sort of focus? Do you just... uh, yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah. Actually, we have 150 editors worldwide. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they work through our team in Windsor, where I'm based. And we have two guys based in Windsor, Cole Klaus and Tom Otto Schaldemel. Mm. And they do a fantastic job of working with these people across the world to actually go in and they actually work on the full data of the full 4,000 plus players in the game. And they do individually go in, they'll set running animation, dribbling animation, celebrations, all these kind of things per player. Wow. Of course, I do want to be honest with you, our partner clubs do get special treatment, nice. they get more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are working with the club, we are creating marketing content like trailers, so we do spend a little bit more time making sure that they're right, but that doesn't mean to say that we won't try and do this sure. kind of little detail. Would that be the same for um, stuff like the facial models and everything like that? Yeah. Dead on for Liverpool squad? No, Liverpool is definitely going to be one of the better ones, yeah. as are Barcelona. But what you'll see here is you'll see you know teams like Brazil here, Atletico Madrid, who aren't a partner, they're a licensed team in the game where you'll see them looking fantastic as well. We do have 3D modelers which can work on face scanning or can actually just build from like, you know, photo references, which oh, is right. crazy. Oh, cool. Obviously the photo references stuff take, takes a lot longer than if we have the 3D capture model sure. data. So yeah. what you see from Lalana, for example, and Henderson is, you can tell, it's like a picture. And so that kind of quality will always be given a little bit extra to those partner teams. Absolutely, yeah. Those little details that made me very excited to see, you know, Henderson scrunching his face after <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. The, the facial animations are something that we that yeah. brought in and actually adds a lot, doesn't it? It really yeah. does, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We saw in the E3 trailer the Usain Bolt. How uh, crazy, yeah. As a player, that's great. Did it take much convincing to make that happen? No, it was a conversation where we met the agent and before we knew it, we were shooting the trailer. This is a project which is built by two people equally. This is not a case of hey, listen, I want to look amazing. Yeah. I want to look great in the game. I want to have pace. pace. Right? I want to have... Yeah, he's definitely going to be 99.99 in acceleration pace. The great thing about Bolt is he's so involved. Mm. I mean, when we announced him, this dude's been posting on social media off his own back like crazy because he loves what we've done. He's seen the pictures. Yeah. He's been doing stuff. He's really involved in it as well. And it was never a plan. It was something that happened and we worked it into the game. One thing that did happen at these three years that on websites that you just like what like Forbes front page uh, yeah, yeah. was bold sure. in Pez. I the mean, exposure. Yeah, yeah. people were like what's Pez? You know, I and mean, that's what the brand really needs is that exposure. Yeah, absolutely, well, and we certainly got it from uh, Bolt. Nice, nice. Will there be any more surprises in terms? Yes, of players? yes. Nice. I want to tell you so much. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I do. <laughs> Where I want to tell you, we've got some great announcements at Gamescom, as big as what we had at E3, but most importantly is when we announce the next big, and I mean big, legend player, mm. biggest maybe, some will say, okay. it won't be something that we're sharing, it'll be only in pairs. Okay. I'm really excited. That's very intriguing. Awesome. Just a few wrap up questions. Are there any opportunities for the public to play PES before it's released? Of course, thank you. July 20th. July 20th. July 20th till the 31st. Yes, it is the online beta. PS4, Xbox One. Yeah. 11 days. Open beta. You can try the 3v3 mode as well, which is going to be really, really important, and yeah. 1v1. And then after that, we'll announce the demo day at Gamescom. We always do, and it's usually maybe the week after Gamescom it comes out. Cool. I'm not sure how it's going to work this year, but yeah. 
I guess that's how it would flow. What's really important to know is that the online beta is, even though I've said, yeah, you can try it, hmm. it's mainly for us to really improve your online quality. Right. So the whole purpose of the beta is not a marketing tool. So otherwise we could have included it in some kind of pre-order incentive or something, but we decided to keep it open because yeah. we want to store that data. I mean, we do hope it goes well because we have obviously done a lot of work on the server system on our side even yeah. before we get there. Hmm. But one thing I do want to show everybody is that the whole beta if it doesn't go well whatever data we're getting we're sending out surveys after the fact as well is that our intention is to have a stable and really enjoyable online experience from day one well that sounds amazing i'm looking forward to playing great as when it's released thank you very much great thank you so much for your time thank you cheers And that, dear friends, is all we have time for on this special episode of Glass to the Wall. Many thanks to Adam Barty from Konami for taking the time to sit down with Tom. And thank you very much to Tom Barry of Cube 3 for actually doing the interview in the first place and attending the event at Anfield, bringing you all sorts of great coverage from Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. If you want to see the full article with more details about the game, be sure to head over to cube3.com. You can also follow our social media channels. You can go to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Cubed3. We're on Pinterest as well. Plus, you can check us out at Cube3 TV on YouTube. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of the show. We don't know when we'll be back, but we'll try to bring you something in the near future, sooner rather than later. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourself, and happy gaming. Good luck.